Thanks for watching the Stephen Mendes educational channel. In this short lesson, we are learning about dependent sources of voltage or current. A dependent source depends on some other voltage or current somewhere else in the diagram. And this allows us to mathematically model the behavior of operational amplifiers or transistors using a standard and simple method that's independent of the particular device. This leads to four possibilities. The four possibilities are current controlled current, current controlled voltage, voltage controlled current, and voltage controlled voltage. Now we notice that the symbol for a dependent source is a diamond shape and not a circle. So whenever you see the diamond shape in the diagram, you are going to look for the controlling information somewhere else to find out what that current is. Now it's a linear equation as you can see and the four constants beta, g, mu and r are shown there when we have a current being controlled by another current we have the familiar beta which is just a number it is the multiplier to tell us how big i is compared to i1 and this is the same as the transistor in the case of mu down in the bottom right hand side we have a voltage being controlled by another voltage and the mu is just a, a number basically an amplification factor that multiplies the small v1 to get the big v now when we have in the other two in the one on the right top right and the bottom left when we have a voltage controlling a current or a current controlling a voltage then the constant is going to have some kind of units now if we have a voltage being regulated by a current the symbol is just r which is our regular resistance so if you look here in the bottom left where we have a current controlled voltage source that is modeled simply by Ohm's law. V equals to IR. And the small r there is the constant and it has units of resistance. When you look up in the upper, upper right hand diagram, where we have a voltage controlled current source, we have to multiply the control voltage by G in order to get the current I and G have units of MOS MHOS which is the inverse of ohms as you can see it's actually ohms spelt backwards okay now let's do a simple example so that we can see how this works out in practice there is the example we want you to do we have an independent current and we have a dependent current. And you can see that although the dependent current has two I1, which means that it's twice, that current there in the diamond symbol is twice whatever I1 works out to be. So you will say, well, how do I find that? Well, it's a lot easier than you might imagine. Okay, because we simply use our standard KVL, KCL and Ohm's law. And in this particular case, because all of these are in parallel, we only need to use the KCL at the top node, as shown there in the red. And we use Ohm's law to relate the I1 to the resistor and the voltage across all of them, which is the main voltage in the diagram. And that's actually what we're trying to find. We're trying to find V. So, as you can see, it re results in a very simple equation. We just, as usual, replace the I, 
the uh, I1, and we have everything in terms of V, and uh, the answer is simple, as you can see. So you can follow that through and uh, rewind the video and take your time, and you'll see it's pretty simple. Okay, now what about using dependent sources with superposition? Well, we cover superposition in another video, but the dependent sources must appear in all your source diagrams. Just in case you haven't watched that video, it will become plain how to do it with a simple example. So now we have an example that looks a little more stressful. We have three independent sources and one dependent source. And uh, we want to find I in the diagram, which actually controls the voltage of the dependent source. As you can see, that's a current controlled voltage source. So the current I is going to determine the voltage across that diamond symbol. And the equation right next to it tells us that whatever I works out to be, the voltage is going to be 10 times that I in volts. That's basically 10 times I gives us the voltage V, which is across the dependent source. So now we know you will realize we have to draw three diagrams, one for the 120 volt source, one for the 12 amp source, and one for the 40 volt source, three diagrams. And that dependent voltage is going to appear in all three diagrams. Now, uh, re you will remember from the superposition lecture, superposition lecture, that when we uh, remove a voltage source, we have to replace it with a simple piece of wire. And when we remove a current source, it simply disappears from the diagram. So our first diagram, which we are going to show you now, has the 12 amp source has simply disappeared. The 40 volt source on the right hand side has been replaced with a simple piece of wire and we end up with a simple circuit, which is quite easy to solve using KVL. Okay, so there is the simple solution in three lines. Notice that the dependent source in the equation is represented by its equation 10I. And that is a voltage around the KVL loop. Okay, now we reproduce the original diagram here so that you can follow what has changed in diagram two. Notice now we have the 12 amp source and we have replaced the 40 volt and the 120 volt with just pieces of wire and we have a simpler diagram. Notice also that in this diagram, because the 12 amp source is pumping current through the 4 ohm resistor in the opposite direction to the I in our original diagram, this means that you have to reverse the polarity of the dependent source. So if the current changes direction, the voltage which is dependent on it will also change polarity. This is why I've written this in green, so make sure you don't miss this point. I is flowing in the reverse direction, so we reverse the plus and minus of the dependent voltage also. Okay, now how is this solved? Well, this is solved simply by using the KCL at that top point where the parallel split occurs and we get the simple equation we introduce a variable i2 and we get the simple equation that i plus i2 comes up to the adds back to the 12 amp source now then we do a kvl equation around the outside loop and uh, we have put on the directions of the voltages there on the resistors to help you. As you will remember, the direction 
polarity of the voltage across the resistor is dependent on the current, the direction the current is flowing through it. And current will always flow from positive to negative. So make sure you follow this. And once you have understood your two equations here, it's a simple matter to solve them. Very simple matter to solve them. And we end up with the current I for this diagram. Once again, we pr reproduce our original diagram so you can see the changes. And we draw diagram 3 for the 40 volt source. Now notice we, we have just disappeared the 12 amp entirely and we have replaced the 120 volts by a piece of wire. So we end up with a very simple loop which will be very easy to solve. But notice also that the I is flowing in the opposite direction to the I in our original diagram. And so once again we have to reverse the polarity of our dependent source. We have to interchange the plus and minus because if the current flows in the other direction, the polarity of the control voltage will also reverse. Now also notice our equation. Our equation says that the voltage across that dependent source is simply 10 times the current I. 10I equals the voltage across that dependent source. So now let's solve it with our simple KVL expression. Once again, we put on the plus and minus signs on the resistors to help you. And uh, we have a simple KVL uh, expression in only one unknown. And uh, we solve that simply to find out that the current in this diagram three is 1.8 amps. Now putting it all together to find the total current, the answer for I, which is the original I in the, in the overall diagram, will be the algebraic sum of the currents from the three diagrams. And when we put them together, we have to put the two that are flowing in the opposite direction as negative. Okay, remember, always remember that the sign of the current indicates its direction in the circuit. So the 5.45 is positive because it's going in the same direction as the arrow in our original diagram. The 4.36 and the 1.8 is negative because the current is flowing in the opposite direction as it did in the prob problem we're trying to solve. And the answer happens to be negative, 0 0.7 amps. So what is the meaning of that? Well, if we look back at our original diagram, and we know that the sign indicates the direction of current, it means that the original I is in the wrong direction. So we realize that the signs are very important and that the arrow in the original problem was pointing the wrong way. So the actual flow is in the opposite direction. So it really should have been, if you wanted to get a positive answer, you would have had to put the I in the opposite direction to how it was shown in the original problem. But negative answers are fine because when you're given a problem and you're asked to find I, if you get a negative answer, you have to give it as a negative answer. You can't interfere with the direction of the arrow in the original problem. Okay, so I hope this helps you to do similar problems and thank you for watching the Stephen Mendes educational channel. See you in the next video.